Hey everybody, it's Natsy Jones here with Natsy Company, and I want to talk to you today about dangerous diligence. Dangerous diligence. What do I mean when I say dangerous diligence? Well, let's think about the word dangerous. Now, most people, when they hear the word dangerous, they think about something that might cause bodily harm. But when I say dangerous, I'm talking about boldness, okay? And then diligence, of course, is just continual effort without giving up. So things are hard out here for a lot of people. And, you know, a lot of us are going after our goals and if you are faint of heart, you won't make it. You have to have some sort of grit, some diligence, something that will keep you going when other people are falling away. So in any given situation, you have a choice. Okay, you can choose to stop or you can choose to keep going. You can choose to make excuses or you can choose to make opportunities. You can choose to stay hurt or you can choose to be strong and to grow and to heal. You can choose to be ignorant or you can choose to continue to learn. Let me give you an example of a choice that I had to make recently. I have a five month old baby who does not sleep through the night. He breastfeeds and I had the goal of finishing my seventh book. I could have easily just said, you know what? This is not the time to write. I'm tired. I'm getting four hours of sleep a night. I can't do this and just get in the funk because when I don't produce, I get in the funk. But you know what I did? When that baby wakes me up twice a night, at least once at one o'clock in the morning between one and two, the other time between three and four, when he does that, what I do, I use at first, I was just tired and upset. And then it clicked. You know what, Natalie? This is an opportunity for you to write because you're up. I mean, what else are you going to do? All he's doing, he's not crying. He's just moving around. He's not sleepy. He's making noise. He's cooing. And he's rolling from side to side for an hour. So let's see how much writing we can get done. You know what I did? Every hour that he woke up, I was able to finish a chapter. And in five days, I finished my seventh book. Now, I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying it to encourage you to understand that anything that looks like an obstacle could really be an opportunity for you to push yourself to the next level. Things aren't always going to be easy. And obstacles are there to present us with an opportunity to use our creativity to figure out a way to get over the obstacle, go around it, or plow straight through it. But the obstacle is not there to stop you. It's there to elevate you. So let's look at Matthew 7, 7. Okay, I got it. Here's the New Living Translation. This is a very, very familiar passage. It says, it's about effective prayer. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks the door will be open. Now, I had heard this scripture before, and it was another translation. That's why I love the New Living Translation. Because it, the other translations I read said, knock, and the door will be open. Seek, and you will find. And so I believe it caused people to think that they just have to knock one time. And if the door doesn't open, then it's like, oh, that scripture was a lie. And they turn around and they give up. Or they seek. And they don't see anything and, say, oh, and then they give up. You know what I'm saying? I like to use my kids as an example. So I have two daughters, one Makai and one Avery. Makai is eight, Avery seven. Avery, we have a joke in the house about how Avery doesn't like to look for anything. So if you're seeking like Avery, you're not going to find. Avery actually came to me one day. I told her to go look for my purse in the other room. Avery said, she literally said in front of me, it wasn't in front of my face. 
which means she walked in the room and looked straight ahead and she didn't see it and she walked back out. She didn't turn to the right or to the left. I said, Avery, if you don't go back in the room and keep looking until you find my purse, I know it's in that room. Look harder, Avery. Somebody say, look harder. Seek and keep seeking. Don't just look one time and say, well, it's not there. Okay, knock and keep knocking. In the morning, every morning, my daughters knock on my door to come in and say good morning. They wake up early like they got a job. I don't understand. Even on Saturdays, they're up at 6. And of course, I've just gone back to sleep because I put my baby to bed at 4.35 o'clock. So that's always interesting. Anyway, this is what we can learn from my girls. They knock. They know they can't come in the room unless I say come in. And I try to ignore them, hoping that they'll go away, but they keep on knocking. Mommy. Mom. Mommy. You up, mommy? And eventually I say, come in. That's what we have to do with God. We knock on the, we knock on the door and say, Father, help me. Father, provide an opportunity. Father, open this door. And he will not ignore us. And for those of you who are not believers, this is just a rule. This is a rule of the universe as well. If you keep on knocking on a door, somebody's going to come to that door. Persistence is irresistible. What's the other part of the scripture? Seeking you'll find, ask and you will receive. With kids, my daughters know I'm easy to break down and they know I have a bad memory because I have mommy brain and I'm tired all the time. So they'll ask me for something. And I got hip to it one day. They asked me for something and I'll say no. Then they'll come back and ask me like 15 minutes later while I'm busy doing something else. And sometimes I say yes and say, wait, didn't you just ask me that? They asked and they kept on asking because they knew the answer that they wanted and eventually they got it. Now, you know, I don't spoil my kids like that, but I'm just using this as an example. You have to have dangerous diligence. You have to go after your goals, I like to say, with all hands and feet. You know what that means? You're not just running with your hands. You down, not just running with your hands. You're not just running with your feet. You are running with all hands and feet like an animal after your dreams. Anything that runs on all fours is going to be faster than what runs just on feet. Trust me. That's what I mean by that dangerous diligence, making a decision that this is mine. I will not take no for an answer. There's an example in the Bible where they say, I, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. God honors the diligent. He honors the persistent. He honors those of us that take his word and bring it back to him and say, hey, this is what you said. I want my stuff. Daddy, father in heaven. So I hope this encourages someone to not give up. If God has given you a dream, I don't care what obstacle comes. It doesn't matter. It's not there to break you down. It's not there to stop you. It might be there to test you for your heart to see how bad you really want it. Do not take the obstacle as a stop sign. Take it as an opportunity to be creative about how you're going to get past it. Be blessed.